Welcome to Unit 12, Video 5, Double Replacement. By the end of this video, you should be able to recognize a double replacement reaction. You should be able to use solubility rules to determine if a double replacement reaction will occur. You should be able to predict the products with phases of a double replacement reaction. And you should be able to write a net ionic equation for a double replacement reaction. A double replacement reaction is a reaction in which the reactant's cations switch places to form a solid precipitate or water. The scheme is AB plus CD yields AD plus CB. For example, here we have potassium chromate and barium nitrate reacting. In this case, the cation from this compound and the cation from this compound will switch places to give us barium chromate and potassium nitrate. Notice that in this reaction, barium chromate, one of our products, is a solid. This is what makes this reaction occur. If no solid forms or water is not a product, there is said to be no reaction. In other words, all of the ions from the reactants remain dissociated in solution. No ions have combined to form a new compound. How do we determine if a solid forms? We use the solubility rules. Recall that when we put ionic compounds in water, they separate out into their positive and negative ions, or dissociate. For instance, if we put barium chloride in water, the solid barium chloride will dissociate in the water to form Ba2 plus aqueous, aqueous barium ions, and two aqueous chloride ions, since the compound was made up of one barium and two chlorides. Recall that strong electrolytes are ionic compounds that completely dissociate in solution. Looking at this visually, if we put five barium chloride formula units in water, we should get five barium two plus ions and ten Cl minus ions, since there's a two to one ratio between chloride and barium. Now let's see what happens if we combine two aqueous solutions. So in this example, we see we've put both barium nitrate and potassium chromate in water. This will cause both of the compounds to dissociate. Notice here I have three barium nitrates, so I should get three bariums in solution. One, two, three. And I should get six nitrates in solution, since it's BaNO3,2. One, two, three, four, five, six. Likewise, the three potassium chromates will give me six potassiums. One, two, three, four, five, six. And three chromates. One, two, three. But if we look at the solubility values for potassium nitrate and barium chromate, we see that potassium nitrate is very soluble in water. In fact, for every liter of water, 316 grams of barium nitrate will dissolve. However, barium chromate is very insoluble in water. Not much barium chromate will dissolve when placed in water. That means that in reality, the bariums floating around in the solution and the chromates floating around in the solution will find each other and combine to form a solid. So what we really end up with is three barium chromate formula units in solid form and our remaining ions that have not formed a solid, our potassium and our nitrate. This is called a precipitation reaction. Our barium chromate has formed a precipitate, a solid from two aqueous solutions. Here's a list of the general solubility rules. There's lots more solubility rules, but these are the most important ones. You'll be given this sheet in class, and you will be always be able to use it on tests and assessments and for homework. Let's take a quick look at how this list works. Look carefully at nitrate. Notice it tells us that any compound in, uh, that has a nitrate in it will be soluble. So as soon as you see nitrate in the compound, you know it's soluble. On the other hand, take sulfate, for instance. This tells us that all sulfates are soluble, so any compound containing sulfate, unless it's barium sulfate, lead sulfate, calcium sulfate, or strontium sulfate. Those are exceptions.
This would be a good time to take out the solubility rules that you've already be give, been given in class. They're on the same sheet as the activity series. Use the solu Let's use the solubility rules to determine which of the following are soluble in water. Taking a look at the first example, barium sulfate, we see that it contains both sulfate and barium. We know that sulfates are always soluble, but we also know that an exception to that is when it's combined with barium. So barium sulfate will be insoluble in water. Pause the video here and use your solubility rules to determine which of the following will be soluble and which will be insoluble. When you come back, I'll reveal the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Notice calcium hydroxide is actually slightly soluble. This means that we do get some solid product, but some of it also dissolves. Let's put these pieces together now and work on determining products of a double replacement reaction. In order to do this, first, we need to determine the possible products that we could get. We do this by switching the cations and determining the new compounds. For instance, if we combine silver nitrate and sodium chloride, our cations will switch places to give us sodium nitrate and silver chloride. We don't know yet, though, if a reaction has occurred because we need to see whether or not either of these products are a solid. So then we look at our solubility rules. Looking at the solubility rules, we see that silver chloride is insoluble, whereas sodium sulfate is soluble. Therefore, a reaction occurs. If both products had been soluble, no reaction would have occurred. Then we write the complete reaction using proper phases of matter, as shown here. Again, silver chloride is a solid because it's insoluble, and sodium nitrate is aqueous because it's soluble. And finally, we balance the equation. This one turns out to be balanced as written, so no coefficients are necessary. Let's try to put all these pieces together and practice some examples. We'll do the first one together, then you can try some on your own. So first, we're going to predict our possible products by switching barium and lead. So we're going to get barium nitrate. Barium has a positive 2 charge, and nitrate has a negative 1 charge. So I'm going to get BaNO32, and then I'm going to get uh, lead chloride. Lead has a positive 2 charge, and chloride has a negative 1 charge. So I'm going to get PbCl2. Now I want to take a look at my solubility rules to see if either of these products are a solid. Notice that barium nitrate contains nitrate, so it's going to be soluble. It will not form a solid. Lead chloride, on the other hand, contains chloride, which uh, tells us that all chlorides are soluble except when combined with silver, lead, or mercury. Here it's combined with lead, so we know that lead chloride is going to be our solid. We've already established that barium nitrate is going to be aqueous. So now we know that a reaction will occur, and these are our products. Notice this equation is also already balanced as written, so no coefficients are necessary. Pause the video here and try the rest on your own. If no reaction occurs because both products are soluble, just write an X. When you come back, I'll reveal the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. There's a few different ways to describe reactions that occur in aqueous solution. The first is with a molecular equation. This is what we've been doing up to this point. This shows complete formulas for all reactants and products. However, it's often more correct to represent these reactions in complete or net ionic equations. A complete ionic equation represents all strong electrolyte reactants and products as ions. In other words, any reactant or product that will dissociate or dissolve in solution, in other words, anything that is soluble, is written as its dissociated ions. For example, taking the reaction above, its complete ionic equation is Ag plus plus NO3 minus plus Na plus plus Cl minus yields silver chloride plus sodium plot positive plus nitrate. 
Notice that we have not written AgCl as dissociated, since it does not dissociate. It is not soluble when it is put in water. Everything else, however, does. This is a more accurate representation of what's actually happening in solution, because AgNO3 isn't really AgNO3 in solution. It's actually Ag plus and NO3 minus, separate from each other. Furthermore, we can write a net ionic equation. This includes only the ions that actually undergo a change. Here we eliminate anything called a spectator ion, or an ion that does not change from reactants to products. So in other words, taking the complete ionic equation from above, which you see written below, we can eliminate any ion that appears on both sides unchanged. So uh, nitrate appears on both sides not in a compound, and sodium appears on both sides not in a compound. Therefore, all that's left is Ag plus plus Cl minus yields AgCl. This is our net ionic equation. The important things to remember for net ionic equations is that only solid and liquid products remain undissociated or do not break up into their ions, and we eliminate the spectator ions. Here's some examples to try. Let's do the first one together, then you can try the rest on your own. We'll start by writing a complete ionic equation, or breaking up everything that's aqueous into its ions. So lead nitrate is aqueous, so it will dissociate into Pb2 plus and NO3 minus. But notice we have two NO3 minuses here, because we, it's PbNO3 2. Ki will also dissociate. Notice since we have two Ki's, we'll get two K pluses and two I minuses. Now our products. PBI2 is a solid, so it does not dissociate. So I'm going to leave that as a solid. And finally, KNO3 is aqueous. It does dissociate, and there's two of them. So we get two K pluses and two NO3 minuses. Oops. Now we can eliminate anything that appears on both sides. So we can eliminate two NO3 minus and two K plus. What's left is our net ionic equation. I'll rewrite it below as PB two plus plus two I minus yields PBI2. And notice, since the equation started balanced, our net ionic equation is automatically balanced. Pause the video here and try the next three on your own. When you come back, I'll reveal the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we learned to recognize a double replacement reaction as a reaction where two cations in two different compounds switch places. Then we use solubility rules to determine if a re double replacement reaction will occur. Recall that reactions only occur when a solid product or water is formed. Then we predicted the products, including phases of double replacement reactions. And finally, we learn to write net ionic equations for a double replacement reaction by writing all aqueous substances as their dissociated ions and eliminating any spectator ions.